Hi guys, how's everybody doing? My name is Sofia Correa and the topic of the day is intratumor heterogeneity and branch evolution. First, we're going to define what is cancer sequencing. The whole genome sequencing of a single homogeneous or heterogeneous group of cancer cells is cancer sequencing. It involves direct sequencing of a primary tumor tissue. Here's a little bit about DNA sequencing. DNA sequencing is a process where we determine and identify every single DNA base, every single DNA element that is in the genome of an individual. And there are six billion of those in every cell, in every normal cell, in every person. And when we apply DNA sequencing we first, in the cancer project, we first figure out what those six billion DNA bases are in the normal cells in that person, and then we take some of the tumor in that person and figure out what the DNA bases are in the, in the tumor. In a cancer, um, the DNA is changed in many different ways. If you think of your DNA sequences as a book, the way you can change is that you can lose a whole paragraph of it, uh, like a deletion, or you can duplicate a paragraph or a page multiple times, uh, or you can have a misspelling, a single letter that's been changed, or pieces that gone to the wrong place. The page, you know, the pages fall apart and you put it back together in the wrong order. And any of those disruptions will lead to misread when the cell proliferate and then leads to mistake and, and alter behavior of the cell. And that ultimately, when you have enough of those things go wrong, you become cancerous. In a typical genome, we might see 30 sites that differ between a person's normal genome and their tumor genome. And, but we look very closely at these 30 differences to try to figure out which ones are the meaningful ones. And one, one way we do that is to look across many people's tumors. So continuing, applications in medicine. What is the use of this DNA sequencing? First, it is, the it is for the characterization and the identification of the DNA or the RNA sequence for all cancer cells. So, when you have this, you can have more knowledge for better di diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of different types of cancers. So, targeted cancer therapy. Since U.S. President Richard Nixon signed the National Cancer Act promoting the work of the National Cancer Institute, since then, clinical care has really changed. Overall, U.S. cancer mortality rates began to decline in the 1990s, though for some cancers, things haven't improved. An estimated 350,000 people in the United States died in 2010 from the seven deadliest cancers. Who gets cancer and what causes it? There are clues in people's genomes and researchers have identified many environmental factors, carcinogens, that can cause the mutations that lead to cancer. And perhaps the greatest accomplishment in cutting down on the incidence of cancer has been in prevention, limiting or eliminating exposures to carcinogens. But in looking at genomes of individual cancers, it's increasingly clear that there are certain mutations in particular genes that drive cancer's development. Now, for each individual cancer, each individual cancer clone, we believe that it requires multiple different driving genes. So that certainly applies to the common adult epithelial cancers, such as cancers of the breast or the prostate and the lung. We believe that in each of those cancers, a number of different genes has to be operative in a single case. So, there's different type of ways you can do the sequencing. Or, oh, you can either do by evaluation of a tumor biopsy samples from four consecutive patients with metaphasic renal cancer, renal cell carcinoma after nephrectomy, and you you can also perform a whole exome. So if you ever wonder how sequencing is done, this is how. Cancer is a genetic disease, and understanding the genetic drivers of cancer has been a game changer. We're one of three centers in the world to have the latest in gene sequencing technologies. 
Up until we acquired these machines, we could do tens, maybe hundreds of cancer genomes a year. With this technology, we're able to do tens of thousands of samples of cancer patients on these machines every year. That's a game changer that represents a major advance in cancer research. So you see this simple slide. On this simple slide, there are millions and millions of pieces of DNA attached. How a cancer forms is that there are a series of changes or mutations in DNA. If we figure out what those changes are, then they potentially tell us not only about how cancers form, but they also contain targets for therapies that we can potentially apply. So to get the DNA on this slide, we start off with a tumour. We take the tumour, we extract the DNA from the tumour, we break it up into small pieces, and then those pieces are chemically modified and then attached to this slide. This slide is then put into the HiSeq 10, and then a sequence is generated for each of millions and millions of fragments of DNA. After we get that sequence, we stitch them together to create the genome of the cancer from which the DNA was originally extracted. It tells us exactly the changes that are present in the cancer cell's genome that make it a cancer. That's the holy grail here, to understand the genetic events that are required to turn a normal cell into a cancer cell. So, continuing with the presentation, we have several pros. And if you do this, you're going to have a better diagnosis, better treatment, and better preve prevention because you're going to have more knowledge about what causes cancer, how it is caused, and what you can do to prevent it. And also you can reduce the risk or the mortality rate of the deadliest cancer, such as pancreatic cancer. A new understanding of the genetics of cancer is transforming treatment. We now understand that uh, there are specific molecular abnormalities that can be found in each tumor, in each patient's tumor, uh, that uh, direct the way that we think about how that tumor formed and how we can treat that patient most effectively. A growing number of cancer practices, like Dr. Trevor Bivona's, are sequencing a tumor's DNA to uncover its genetic abnormalities. The aim? to pair a drug with a specific mutation fueling a patient's disease. The lives of, of, of patients with lung cancer and many other cancers have been transformed by this genetic technology, and the reason is because uh, we've used it to deploy uh, more effective and less toxic therapies for patients. So many patients with advanced stage lung cancer uh, who are treated with one particular targeted therapy um, uh, called uh, Tarsiva actually can derive significant benefit, and these patients often are able to carry out almost a normal life with advanced stage lung cancer. Uh, and so it's quite transformative for, for the lives of these patients. Because the cost of sequencing has come down and uh, the sequencing technologies are much more powerful and can identify um, genetic changes in the entire genome of, of, of a human being or a cancer, um, this allows us now to, to deploy this sequencing technology in a clinical setting uh, for use in patients, in every patient that walks in the door of our clinics. We're finding as we sequence more and more tumors across many different tumor types, lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, uh, even skin cancers, that many of the same genes are mutated across many different cancers, uh, and, and therefore drugs that target those mutated genes can be applied uh, broadly uh, in, in many cancers. Although these drugs have dramatic effects and, and, and improve patients' lives almost immeasurably. It's 745. Uh, there is a uh, the development of drug resistance, which which, uh, which occurs in virtually all patients. And that is, a, again, a situation in which we have been and continue to deploy our genomic technologies to figure out exactly how the tumors have escaped therapy and, and become drug resistant. Uh, and in many cases, identified additional mutations that can be targeted with existing uh, available therapies or emerging. Uh, so now we have cons. The cost of sequencing is really high. It is also a topic that is not in-depth investigated, and not everyone might be okay with it, as for people might not want to know what disease they can have. If you if you want to keep continuing, I mean, you know, you don't really want to know if you actually have cancer, or people might just want to live and then at the, the final days just know what they have. 
this is why um, the first reason cost of sequence is really high. That's why we don't really have it in Ecuador because the the machine that you just saw, the high sequence, that is very and extremely extremely costful. It is very expensive, and we don't really have it here. So just uh, the developed nations actually can do this type of things. Related disease. We I found that sickle cell diseases are related to this type of uh, cancers and the sequencing also. It is a hereditary blood disorder characterized by red blood cells that assume an abnormal rigid sickle sh shape. Sequin decreases the cell's flexibility and results in a risk of various life threatening complications. Seventeen year old Alexandria Young of St. Louis, Missouri has sickle cell anemia among seventy two thousand Americans with the disease. Among all Americans, approximately one in fifteen hundred to one in two thousand newborns will be diagnosed with sickle cell disease. In people with sickle cell disease, their red blood cells become deformed, turning sickle shaped. The bone marrow tries to make more red cells to make up for the loss, but can't keep up, causing anemia. Their new shape keeps them from moving properly through the body, and the misshapen cells can jam up and stick to the walls of the blood vessels. These clumps cut off oxygen to healthy tissue, delaying a child's normal growth and causing fatigue and extreme pain. It's like like a hammer beating at you like for a long time. I never heard anybody scream that high and just well out and and uh, we were like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And and she had it so bad where her eyes just roll back up, you know, just roll back and. And you know, just in pain, just just screaming, yelling, and we we didn't know what to do. And I thought she was just talking in her sleep or, or something, but she had mentioned that she was ready to go home. So it can be actually a friend in disease. The full blood count reveals that hemoglobin levels in the vira in the range from six to eight grams, with a high reticulocyte count. For the management, we have a uh, variation from folic acid and penicillin, bone marrow transplant, which is the thing that everyone should go for if it's really bad, and blood transfusion, which is the most common one. Zabieg pobrania szpiku od Olgi odbędzie się w warunkach sali operacyjnej w znieczuleniu ogólnym. Sam zabieg będzie trwał około godziny. Po tym okresie Olga będzie wyprowadzona ze znieczulenia ogólnego i po pobycie jednodniowym będzie po wykonaniu badań kontrolnych wypisana do domu. So this is about bone marrow transplant. How the procedure is done. Trzeba powiedzieć, że przeszczepienie szpiku, a mówiąc bardziej naukowo przeszczepienie komórek krwiotwórczych w niektórych chorobach jest w tej chwili jedyną metodą, której udokumentowano wyleczenie. Zero, dawca ma w znieczuleniu ogólnym w jak najbardziej komfortowym wykonywanym przez jak najlepszych anestezjologów. On, on jest znieczulony, także on w zasadzie śpi w tym czasie. Natomiast zespół pobierający złożony z lekarzy i pielęgniarek, pracowników laboratorium w tym czasie dokonuje zasania z, kości większych, głównie miednicy, T 
treści złożonej ze szpiku i z krwi. So yeah, that's a little bit about the procedure. Thank you guys.